This is the Artpreneur Workshop. So what I've done is I've taken a three-day workshop. I'm presenting it to you now. And you'll be here all night. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing it all now. And I want you to know, no matter what kind of art you create, you're in the right place. You're going to get so much out of our time together. So it doesn't matter if you're a boutique artist, if you're a glass artist, if you're a photographer, whether you're just starting to think about the idea of selling your art, or you're just getting started, or you've had some success in the past, but what used to work now only brings in a trickle of art sales. You've heard from the experts. You need a big social media following or artist s'more fronts. I mispronounce it on purpose so they don't sue me. Or you've watched other artists do it so easily, and then when it doesn't work for you, that erodes your confidence. And it can make you feel like you're not good enough. Or maybe your art isn't good enough. So which best describes you? I want you to hold up your fingers. You're just starting to sell your art or you're getting ready to. Two fingers. You've sold art, but you're disappointed. Or you're killing it, but you're looking to do better. Let's see. Let's hold up some fingers. OK, I want you guys to look around the room. There's not too many people with thumbs up. One, two, or two thumbs. Whatever stage you're in, don't worry. You're in the right place. I remember when I first started selling my art 20 years ago, I had many of the same thoughts and fears, and I haven't reached enlightenment yet, so I still have these thoughts and fears. Real quick, I just want to introduce myself. Who am I? I'm Miriam Shulman. I'm the author of the number one business book for artists, Artpreneur, which many of you have, and I'm host of the Inspiration Place podcast. Now, back in the 90s, you'd find me at the World Trade Center in my Ann Taylor suits. And I love the income and the lifestyle, but I felt disconnected from my life purpose. Can you guys relate to that? Yeah. When 9-11 happened, I knew I couldn't go back to that world. And yet, I still didn't believe that I could make a full-time living from my art. So at first, I painted on the side, and I taught Pilates at New York Sports Club. And while I was working for the gym, they taught me selling strategies. Because the gym's model, it's not just about memberships. It's about personal training packages. So I thought, huh, I could use these same techniques to sell my art. That's when I realized that these time-tested selling strategies could be used to sell anything, including art. So over the last 20 years, I've built a multiple six-figure art business, a sustainable business that I can count on year in and year out. And yes, that was before I had the book and before I had the podcast and before I started helping other artists, just so you know. It's just from selling my art. I sold thousands of artworks online through Etsy, eBay, my own website, and completed literally hundreds of high-end portrait commissions. And yes, yes, I've made my share of mistakes along the way. And not everyone selling their art is successful. Not then, not now. And that's why today we're going to break down what you do need to focus on and what are just myths. All right, so how do I know this? I've coached hundreds of artists who all came in believing one of the more of these myths. And at one time or another, I believed most of them as well. So here's my promise to you. During our time together, you're going to learn what's holding you back and start taking inspired action on what you need to do instead. By the end of this workshop, you're going to have a complete roadmap for how to sell your art, for how to earn a consistent, sustainable income from selling your art. OK, even if you hate posting on social media, even if you're an introvert or feel socially awkward, even if the thought of selling scares the bejesus out of you, and even if you've tried everything and you feel it still hasn't worked. The difference between starving artists and successful artists is that Successful artists plan for profit. Here are the five foundations. I'm going to just list them right now really fast. 
don't worry, we're gonna be going over them in great detail, but it's the production plan, the prospecting plan, the pricing plan, the promotion plan, and the productivity plan. If you're struggling, it's because you have a problem with one of those areas. So we're gonna cover the five part passion to profit framework in more detail after the break. There will be a few breaks. But before we get to that, we have to get to the root of the problem. So I wanna go over with you now the five most common problems that keep artists starving. So problem number one, spending too much time on low profit art. This is things like, like we have here, hand painted rocks, stickers, uh, anything that's like low profit, low cost. Artists who have this problem think the problem is not enough traffic or customers. I've heard this so many times. People who are selling greeting cards. I said, well, I just don't have enough people to sell them to. The real problem is they're trying to sell cheap things at a volume, they're trying to be Hallmark as a one person show. So how do you know if you have this problem? Well, most of your art is probably under $500, or worse, under $100, or even under $50. You think you have a prospecting problem, meaning you don't have enough prospects, and you think you just need a bigger audience. But the real problem is you have a production problem, because you're selling low profit art. So that's why I want you to meet one of my clients, Dawn Trimble. So when she came to me, she was selling art for $50. So I was like, you've got to stop this, cut this out. So she doubled her prices, actually more than doubled, in three months. She increased her email list. We'll talk about that in a moment. And in October 2020, she made $5,000 in one month without advertising, just from email. And then she did it again in February 2021, she made $8,300 from selling original paintings just from her email list. So what made the difference for Dawn? She stopped selling those $50 art and started selling art for $1,400. She started believing in the value of herself and her art. And she understood that there were collectors out there willing to pay a premium for her art they were waiting for her to believe in herself. Okay, now we're moving on to problem number two. Being afraid to charge higher prices. I put in parentheses for whatever the reason. We'll fill in what some of those reasons might be. Artists with this problem think that low priced art is cheaper to sell, is easier to sell. They think cheaper art is easier to sell. The truth is high-end art collectors will think something is wrong with the art if it's underpriced, kind of like wine. How can that, it's $5 for this bottle, how could it possibly be good? So here's the myth, cheaper is easier to sell. Here's the fact, price isn't always the deciding factor and rates can be, and conversion rates, meaning how well it sells, can be high with high-end art. So let me give you an example. Raise your hand if you're willing to buy a Rolex watch from me for $49.50. Would you? <laughs> or $400. It would be hard. It would be hard to sell a Rolex watch even for $400 because most people would think it was fake or stolen or something else. Right, because Rolex is, now I'm not a watch wearer, but I did my research and it seems they should be around $5,000. So it would be easier to sell a watch like that for 4,000 than it would for $400. But let's give another example because most of us don't buy Rolex watches. Where in life are you less price sensitive? How about babysitters? Would you hire the cheapest babysitter Will you go sh price shopping for a cheaper one? And if you don't have kids, what about for your vet? Would you find, go looking for the cheapest vet? Or if your vet told you that the surgery was $2,000, would you go find someone to do the same surgery for 20 bucks or 200 bucks? Don't think so. 
So our collectors are luxury buyers and they want art that is, write this down, you all have pens there. They want art that is reassuringly expensive. Sometimes it's the only way they know there's something that's good is that the price needs to make sense. So how do you know if you have a pricing problem? Have you said to yourself any of these thoughts? I call these low profit thoughts. No one buys art at those prices in my town. <laughs> I'm just starting out. I can't charge my friends slash coworkers slash family slash person I met 10 minutes ago. <laughs> no one's buying art. It's a pandemic, recession, earthquake in Turkey, election year in the United States. So how do you fix this? Raise your prices. <laughs> it's really that easy. And overcome pricing drama. All right, we're moving on to problem number three. I'm wondering if you guys are seeing yourself in any of these problems so far. Just like nod your heads. Okay, just so I know. All right, problem number three, treating Instagram like a sales catalog. So usually artists who have this problem, they think they just need a bigger audience and then they'll be able to sell art. Or they think they just don't know how to sell on Instagram. So how do you know if you have this problem? Now, if you don't have Instagram, you don't have this problem. Don't worry. <laughs> your Instagram is very salesy and not social. You get very few comments on your post. You think you just need more followers. You're still making less than $50,000 a year, even though you have a lot of followers. How else do you know if you have this problem? You don't have an email list. Your e you have an email list, but there's less than 500 people on it. Or you have an email list, but you're too afraid to use it. <laughs> okay, so here's the myth. You believe the problem is not a big enough audience. The fact is, the better you are at connecting, the fewer people you need. And, and don't worry, my friends, I'm not going to tell you that there's a better way to do things on Instagram. That's not the answer either. Instagram is for connection. That's why I asked everyone, connect with me. That's the best thing it's for. It's for connecting with people. But let me give you some stats on Instagram. The average engagement rate on Instagram is 0.6%. Not, that's not 6%, by the way. That's out of 1,000 people, only six people are going to engage with anything you do. Like, comments, whatever. The average rate for an influencer, those are the people who want to teach you how to get better engagement on Instagram, the average rate for an, for an influencer is still only 1.2%. That means out of 1,000 people, these influencers only have 12 people engaging with them. All right, so what's the fix? The fix is anyone who's interested in your art prospects is to move them either from Instagram or from real life where you're meeting them or wherever it is that you're going out in the world to your email list. Why? The average open rate on an email is 24%. So let's compare that. That means that if you have 100 people on your email list, 24 people will see what it is you're talking about. Let's compare that to Instagram. If you have 1,000 followers on Instagram, only six people will engage with it. So on email, you only need 100 subscribers to have 24 people engage with your art. But you would need 4,000 people on Instagram for 24 people to engage with you. There we go. The numbers don't lie. Instagram, 4,000 followers to get 24 people. Email, 100 subscribers to get 24 people. Now that you see these numbers, which makes more sense to focus on? Building an email list or building an Instagram page? Okay, this is why it's much easier to make money as an artist or anything, whatever it is that you're interested in making money from, because I heard there's a lot of different kinds of industries here. Uh, when you build an email list, rather than try to build a huge Instagram following. Now, if you have doubts about how this works, we'll talk about more, more about that after the break. But now we've got to talk about problem number four, being afraid to sell. Now, Many artists are aware <laughs> that they have this problem, but sometimes you don't realize you have this problem. Sometimes they believe stories 
that they think about why selling won't work for them. Things like, mm, it's not a good time to sell because it's those things we talked about before. It's a looming recession, it's a pandemic, it's raining outside, um, no one buys art in my town, I'm an introvert, marketing is cringy. So here's the fix. You do wanna sell your art in an authentic way that doesn't feel cringy or salesy. You can embrace your inner weirdo and make more sales. And that's something I talk about in the book. You all have the book. So chapter six is called Embrace Your Inner Weirdo. And you'll learn in that chapter that weird means magical, it means fate, it means destiny. That is the origin of the word. So when Shakespeare wrote Macbeth, he called it the Weird Sisters. Back then, it didn't mean what it means now. It's only after the centuries when the word, um, when the supernatural became vilified, that the word weird took, took on a negative connotation. Really, weird is what your fate is, it's what your destiny is, it's what's gonna make you stand out from chat GPT and AI. It's about having a point of view. All right, so that's why I want you to meet Ashley Longshore. She's a contemporary artist who has gained a widespread recognition for her bold and unconventional style. Ashley has built her success by embracing her unique perspective and celebrating individuality. Her artwork features bright colors, bold lines, unconventional subject matter, often featuring iconic celebrities and pop culture figures. Her willingness to take risks and experiment with different mediums has helped her stand out in the art world. And Longshore is known for her quirky personality and irreverent sense of humor, which she incorporates into her art. She's unapologetic about her unconventional approach to life and art, and she encourages others to embrace their own quirks and differences. She serves as a powerful role model for anyone who feels like they don't fit in and shows it's possible to achieve success on your own terms. Now, I know that some people may be thinking, wait a minute, my art isn't weird or isn't that out there. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that you can still be yourself, whatever that means to you. All right, now we're moving on to problem number five, indulging in overwhelm. This is a productivity problem. Artists who have this problem, they think they don't have enough time. The fix is focus only on what's important and eliminate what doesn't work. And I think by now you might guess what I think doesn't work is the Instagrams. Okay, so let's do a problem recap. Number one, spending too much time on low profit art. Two, afraid to raise your prices. Three, being salesy on Instagram. Four, afraid of selling. Five, indulging in overwhelm. So I wanna ask you, what do you think all five of these problems have in common? You can just blurt it out. What do you think it has? Go ahead. Confidence, lack of confidence, okay. Anyone else have a guess? Lack of confidence, any other guesses? Um, we, you, are the one who has control over the situation. Okay. To affect change, positive change in all those areas. Yeah. Any other guesses? And there's no wrong answers. You'll see in a moment where I'm getting with this. No one else? Following mainstream. Hmm? Following mainstream practice. Following mainstream, okay. All right, all your answers are right. This is like the teacher, the answer I'm looking for. Focusing on the wrong things. But those of you who said self-confidence, you're not wrong because they're all, these problems are all caused by a scarcity mindset. That's the cause of it. That's what we're thinking, scarcity thoughts, and it, it causes us to focus on the wrong things. And that's where the problems are. So most start a struggle, not because they aren't working hard enough. I know you guys are working really hard but because they focus on the wrong things. That's why we're gonna talk about what you should be doing instead. Now, if you recognize yourself in any of these problems, don't worry, you're not alone, it's not your fault, nobody has just shown you a better way. There's so much bad advice out there from coaches who lack experience and integrity and who frankly make money off of it. Hey, I'll show you how to get a bigger engagement on Instagram or TikTok. So I feel why you feel doubtful about being a better way. So let's turn that insight into inspired action. It's your turn. From this point forward, 
intentionally declare your identity as an artist. This is gonna let, to, let the world know you're ready to claim that identity. At the same time, you're gonna develop the skill of articulating what you do and why, which is an essential skill for all artpreneurs. That's why I began my book, Artpreneur, with this quote. So you guys all are lucky enough to have it on the table. This is Oprah Winfrey. Every time you state what you want, to, want or believe, you're the first to hear it. It's a message to both you and others about what you think is possible. Now we're gonna talk about what you should be focused instead. So this is the five-part passion to profit framework. We're gonna talk about the five Ps to building a thriving art business. By the way, this works in every single business. I'm just gonna show you how it applies to artists. So here's what you're gonna learn. You're gonna learn the exact five-part passion to profit plan. This is how I built a thriving six-figure art business over the last 20 years. And you're gonna learn the number one skill that you must have in order to skyrocket your art sales and how to cut through all the noise and overwhelm to focus on taking inspired action steps that get results. There's never been a better time for you to sell your art on your own, whatever it is, whatever you call your art to be, outside of the traditional system. Because the art world gatekeepers, the publishing gatekeepers, the people who used to decide what was worthy are being pushed aside by the internet. And now anyone with a laptop and a dream can truly make a thriving living from their art. And that's so groundbreaking, I wanna say it again. Anyone can make a thriving living from their art. And a lot of people push back at me when I say this. They're like, wait a minute, Miriam, what about talent? I was like, okay, we all know very talented people not doing so well. And we all know people not so talented. And we look at them like, I don't get it. <laughs> so what makes the difference? The difference is what we've been talking about. It's marketing and it's mindset. What you just brought up, it's mindset. Mindset is the number one thing too, because though you can, I can show you all the marketing. If you don't believe it's gonna work, you're not gonna do it, you'll sabotage yourself. So I want you to just take a moment to imagine what it would feel like to be earning a sustainable living from your art. And those of you who, who, who had your, your hand up for three, you feel like you're killing it, just imagine doubling your art sales. Imagine what that would feel like, what that would do for you. Your collectors, the people who fall in love with your work, they don't care if you're insta-famous, they really don't. They collect your art because they feel a connection with you. There's no fame required. And when I hear somebody say, I, I just need to know how to do whatever, I just need to get my website perfect, or I just need to learn TikTok or Reels, and then I'll be ready. You'll never feel ready. You know why? Readiness is not a feeling. So many artists get caught up in wanting it to get it all perfect, and it's not just artists. This is a people thing. They never actually get their dreams going. And it's not because there's anything wrong with you or you're broken. Our brains have evolved for survival, which means keeping us safe, not goal achievement. That's why we wanna get everything perfect because we don't wanna fail. We don't wanna get eaten by tigers. What you don't realize is there's only five things you do need to focus on to build a thriving art business. So that's what we're gonna talk about right now. There's five fundamentals. So you don't have to worry about the algorithms changing or a new social media fad. That's not what's important. So let's go over the passion to profit plan. It's a five part framework, covers all the bases. So number one, this is your production. It's about consistently building a body of artwork, making sure you're producing new work on a consistent basis. Some of the problems I see with artists when they talk to me is either they have art that takes too long uh, they have art that, you know, it's too small and can't be priced higher. Um, sometimes they have a scarcity mindset and they don't want to let go of the art that they're making because they're afraid there's not another good one out there. Got to have an abundant mindset. That's why it's all about mindset. Now, just because you're marketing your art doesn't mean you should sacrifice sacred studio time. You can have both. 
That's why I want you to meet Patrick Gaindo. Patrick's from this area. Who knows Patrick? Yes. Okay. In 2021, Patrick was working remotely as a teacher. He's going to be so mad I shared all this with you guys. <laughs> and spinning on a downward spiral. And at the end of the day, this is what he said to me. I was a grumpy dad and partner. I was so drained. I struggled to make time for my art, and my mental health suffered. He knew he had to leave that job and that he wanted to take a real shot at making his art a business. But he wasn't sure how to do it because it's hard to figure this out on your own. That's why he joined the Artist Incubator. So let's fast forward to today. Patrick has left his teaching job. He lives in Prince Edward Island. He's now fully on the path to being a full-time artist and he doubled his earnings year over year. He shared with me, I'm confident I'll soon be making a living 100% from my art. And he did this. For those who don't know Patrick, he has four kids, and two of them aren't even in school yet. And yes, he has a wife, but she works too. So when she comes home at 3 o'clock, so do the other two kids. So if he can do it, so can you. Pricing plan. This is learning how to price for profit. A lot of times this is just math. So let's do an example. Uh, let's talk about the greeting cards before, before we get here. Let me just back up, get that off the screen. So if I was selling something for $5, whether it was a sticker or a greeting card, a $5 item, and I wanted to make $50,000 from my art, I need to sell 10,000. That's 10,000 human beings you need to sell to, or the same person buying a lot of cards. Okay. So it's a lot easier to sell 50 items that are $1,000 each. You only need 50 human beings now. You see that? Successful artists learn how to price for profit at premium prices. And the key to raising your prices is to communicate with confidence. And we will be talking about how to raise your confidence, because I know that a lot of people pointed out you know, the confidence was a common theme here. Many artists worry that their sales will plateau when they raise their prices. That's why I want you to meet Kayla. So Kayla, she also has two small kids, and she was burning herself out with a job as a vet tech. She was making money on the side with her pet portraits, a good, good painting job for someone who's a vet, and she was worried about losing this extra income if she raised her prices. When she joined the incubator, she was getting $1,500 for her large commissions, which is great. I know some people may think, oh, that's amazing. I wish I could get that. But I knew that her collectors would pay more. So after working with me, she booked her largest commission to date. And this time, she charged $3,500. In other words, $2,000 more. Did her client complain? No. Not only did he not complain, but he ordered more things. He spent $4,400, which maybe means there's room for her to raise it more. So you may think that cheaper is easier to sell, but collectors perceive your art as more valuable when it's priced higher. Okay, so now we're going to talk about prospecting. This is about building a list of people who want what you've got and are prepared to pay top dollar. So it is easier than you think without expensive or complicated advertising. But how the heck do you find these high-end art collectors? That's what people always ask me. But Miriam, where are these people? OK, so there are three ways to find your audience. And this is, there's only three ways. It doesn't matter what you're selling. The first way is your universe. So it's your platforms. Platforms could be in social media, but it's really any time you go out into the world and meet people, whether that's in an in-person show or you're at a grocery store and you're talking about what it is that you do. The second way is free publicity. So these are other people's platforms. So what is that? Somebody writes um, a, an article about you. Somebody in the paper um, comes to your show and takes your photograph and puts that in the paper. That's free publicity. We're going to talk about that in a moment, how that's been very profitable for many of my clients. And also paid advertising. This one, I, I hesitate to even mention it because people think that that's the answer. It's Facebook ads. Don't worry. You do not have to do expensive, complicated Facebook advertising. But sometimes strategic advertising can really pay off. So we'll talk about that as well. OK, that's why I want you to meet Elizabeth. Elizabeth is a wildlife artist. 
And her press, her one article press, generated $9,500 in art, art sales. So what she did is she went to this art collector magazine. It was a paid promotion, but she negotiated with them. She said, if I pay for an ad, will you write an article about me? So that one press led to $9,500 in sale, and she surpassed her income goal in six months, all while working a full-time job. But there's more, because I talked to Elizabeth recently, and she shared with me that this press led to a repeat collector that spent $29,000 buying her art. And she gets these additional sales through her email list. And the collector found her through the magazine. So that's what's possible for you, because she wasn't insta-famous either. She was making wildlife paintings, and she was working 60 hours a week as a, a tour guide. All right, now we're moving on to promotion plan. This is about your sales and marketing plan. Now that you have that collector base, this is the step-by-step -step plan to turn them into repeat collectors. When you develop this plan, this is how your, your, your collectors will joyfully whip out their credit cards to buy your art. When I tell artists they need to build an email list to promote their art, all kinds of fears come up. Things like, isn't that bothering people? Does this really work? And what do I say? Why email marketing? because it works. It allows you to reach people all over the world. And I purposely put in a variety of people in there so that you could see we had a calligraphy artist, we had an abstract artist, we had a fiber artist. It doesn't matter what kind of art you do, and it doesn't matter where you live. We, there was a lot of Canadians who were in there as well as people from other places in the world. And there's no algorithm. And by the way, what works even better than email is physical mail. That works really well for selling things because there's no spam filter on the front door. There's no spam filter on your inbox and people get so few physical mail pieces these days that when they get one, they really pay attention. Okay, so now we're moving on to the productivity. You wanna organize all this so you, don't, so you stop spinning. You wanna get organized and focus only what works. So let's go over what the five things are again. This is what you do need to focus on. Your production, you're producing art, you're prospecting, you're finding people, and you're putting them on an email list. Your pricing, it's gotta be high enough. No $49 Rolexes. You're promoting, promoting via email or regular physical mail, or both, hopefully, and your productivity plan. How do you put this all together? Okay, so this is the belief triad. Belief triad is three parts. You must believe in your art. We've all heard that. You must believe in yourself and call yourself an artist. And you must believe in your buyer. You must believe in your buyer, the art collector, customer, or client. Now the story I like to tell about this to help you see when you're not believing in your buyer is the scene in Pretty Woman where she goes shopping. Anyone not see the movie Pretty Woman? All right, well in Pretty Woman, it's basically a Cinderella story except she's, she's a hooker. Okay, so uh, Richard Gere says you gotta buy some nicer clothes. He gives her the gold card. She goes to Rodeo Drive, dressed like a hooker, and the salespeople won't wait on her. And we all think we're not that mean salespeople. But how many times have we lowered our price for somebody because we thought they couldn't afford it or didn't offer it to them? That's what not believing in your buyer looks like. It's self-sabotage. If you're struggling to make a full-time living as an artpreneur, it's because you have limiting beliefs in one or more areas. If you don't believe in your talent, that means you lack belief in your art. If you don't believe in your ability to sell, that's a lack of belief in yourself. If you don't believe in your ability to make a living pursuing your art, that's a lack of belief in your customer. But besides doing affirmations, what can you do to build confidence? So that's why we're talking about secret number one. Let me tell you about Margaret. Not her real name, that's just the name I gave her in my book. It is a real person though. 
So when she came to me, she was telling me, well, I know I should be doing this and I should be doing that, but I'm procrastinating. I said, why do you think you're procrastinating? She says, it's because I lack confidence. I said, no, it's the other way around. The reason you lack confidence is because you procrastinate. The very definition of the word confidence is trusting yourself. This is the definition. Belief in the powers, trustworthiness or reliability of a person or thing. Every time you procrastinate, you are eroding your self-confidence. Every time you follow through with your commitments, that's what builds your confidence because that is self-trust. That's what it means. If you lack confidence, it's because you're not following through. But that's not all. So what else works? So that's what we're going to talk about, secret number two. Surrounding yourself with the right people. That's why we're here tonight. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So don't spend time with people who put your dreams down. Spend time with people who see what's important in what you do. If you don't hang out with other artists, it's easy to give up on your dreams. Throughout art history, successful artists have all had one thing in common. They had artist friends. Even Van Gogh, who was, a, who was mostly a loner, he had Gauguin, even though he cut off his ear, I think. Uh, these are the abstract expressionist women. That's um, Joan Mitchell, Grace Hardigan, and uh, Helen Frankenthaler. Andy Warhol and Basquiat. Oh, that's me. <laughs> One of the most powerful things that successful people do that unsuccessful people don't is that we invest in our relationships. Okay, you all have a table here. Make sure you stay in touch. All right, secret number three, write down your goals. That's why I made you write down the manifesto. And there was this line where it says, what number do you want to make with your art? I hope everyone declared a number, not just make as much money as possible. It really makes a difference to put it in writing. Research shows that you're 42% more likely to achieve your goals just by writing them down. That's why I had you create that artist manifesto. The physical act of writing gets your brain to pay attention because it activates both sides of your brain. All right, secret number four. Celebrate, celebrate your wins. And your win, it's not just when you make an art sale. Your win is when you do that scary thing that scared the bejesus out of you. It's falling through on your commitment, so celebrate that too. Celebrating progress is the key to achieving your goals. But remember, we humans, we've evolved for survival, not goal achievement. That's why we're more likely to focus on the negative. Ooh, last time I left a cave, I got eaten by a tiger. Better not do that again. When you focus on the positive, that's how you stay motivated. All right, and now we're down to the last secret, secret number five. Invest in your dreams. You all took a great step coming here tonight. You invested, I don't know, was it $25? $25, but more importantly, you invested your time. You invested your time. You could have stayed home and watched Netflix. There's lots of things going on there. So I want you to meet Priya. So Priya lives in Australia. When she joined the incubator, she was doing well, but she had big dreams. She wanted to raise her prices. She wanted to join art galleries, but she knew she needed help. Inside the incubator, she found clarity, focus, and commitment. And she joined two galleries off of her dream list. By the way, she got them through sending a postcard to them. Okay, just want you to know that. One of them, one of them was through a postcard, the other one was through publicity. She raised her prices, and she's now a full-time full artist. She was an engineer. She was willing to invest in her dream. So it's an investment in time also. It's, it's, so let's recap all five of these secrets. Commit to following through. Surround yourself with other artists. Write down your goals. And celebrate your wins. And invest in your dreams. OK, and now I want to add a bonus ingredient. Can anyone guess what that is? All right, I will tell you. Invest in a coach. 
there's the one thing that separates those on the struggle bus and those whose careers are soaring. And let me give you a metaphor. If you wanted to go for a walk on the beach, you don't need a guide. What if you wanted to go hiking? Maybe. <laughs> what if you wanted to do that? You'd be a fool not to have a guide. And the economy we're living in right now is like rock climbing. You absolutely need a coach if you want to survive, especially if you want to enjoy the experience. Now, you might be thinking, I got this. I can do it on my own. And if that's you, I applaud you. However, what often stands in the way of those who are struggling and of our emotional triggers, such as doubt and fear about what you need to do next. And if you aren't sure what to do, you'll probably end up doing nothing or worse, spinning, doing the wrong things. So successful people, no matter what they're trying to do, know they will get there faster with an expert guide who's already walked the path. Like that. You may be good, you may even be better than everyone else, but without a coach, you'll never be as good as you could be. And if the greatest athletes in the world have coaches, why shouldn't we? So here's the point. The point isn't to sign up with me or not. The point is, whether it's me or someone else, get yourself a coach. Now, many of you know I have a program called the Artist Incubator. It is the best opportunity for you. It is a community of artists who are ready to spread their wings and soar. And it's not about piling more on your plate or procrastinating learning. It's about taking inspired action and taking the right actions, doing the things that actually make a difference. Now, if I told you that the biggest factor impacting your ability to sell your art is your confidence, would you believe me? Deep down, you know that if only you had more confidence, it would unlock all kinds of opportunities for you. And I believe that 100%, which is why it's baked into every aspect of my program. So what exactly is the Artist Incubator? It has the four keys that will help you be successful, coaching, strategy, mindset, and accountability. And it's especially designed for artists like you who want to learn a sustainable living using a proven system that gives you everything you need to know and nothing that you don't, no matter what kind of art you create. So not only do you over overcome overwhelm, but you gain those practical strategies that you need to know. Okay, you accelerate your art sales by implementing the five-part passion to profit framework. So everything we talked about today, production, how to build the best website, create a marketable portfolio, set up your business so it's financial, how to price your art. For those of you who are visual artists, there's a pricing calculator. Prospecting, remember there are three ways. You learn all of them, organic marketing, publicity and press, paid advertising, and how to promote, mostly through emails, how to close your sales, whether it's in person or online. And if you want to, online art classes, but I do have to tell you, do not have to build an online art class for a successful business. You're gonna learn how to build your email list, even if you're starting from scratch, and I give you all these done for you templates for you're struggling what to say, I've done it for you, and I'll help you with productivity. So how do I do that? Every month you get to meet live with me. Three times a month you get to meet with a mindset coach. <coughs> And these sessions are going to empower you to remove that I'm not ready yet from your vocabulary. We also match you up with an accountability buddy because being an artist is lonely. Being an artist is lonely. You're in front of, in your studio trying to make this all work. So just imagine having not only the people you have here, but this virtual cafe of people that you can reach out to at any time. So this is the program. Yes, you can sell more of your art. Yes, there are art collectors out there waiting for you to have the confidence to show up and sell. Confidence building is baked into every pro aspect of the program. Spanish imposter syndrome, overcome overwhelm, beat back your perfectionism, and end procrastination. Let's not let another year slip by without turning your dreams into reality. With the right strategy and support and accountability, you can make those dreams real. Here's to surprising yourself with what's possible when you commit, show up, 
and take inspired action. You are enough. You are more than capable. And I want you to have the same confidence in your art business as you do in your incredible artwork. And it would be my honor to show you the way. Okay.